Yeah, we're, we're streaming, Mama. Are we? Well, we're, yeah, I think it's going right now. <laughs> Is it on? All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, I, my mom has a, has a full schedule. She's already ready to rock and roll. She's uh, got to meet my brother soon. We're all going to go to my brother's. And I love talking to my mom about intense stuff. And it's always an honor. She doesn't get to come out here very often. So I thought we'd just pop on and feel free to ask my mom any questions. And in the meantime, we are just going to chat. Uh, oh. Mom, you were, you were noticing some cool stuff. Oh, those bears, the white ones, are they um, hand carved? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I, incredible, because look at the, the paws on them. Look at the, the oh, detail. It's, a, it's unbelievable. Maybe we should open some stuff from people. That's a good idea. Let's, oh o- let's gosh, open gifts. Owen. This and is I, from... I've got, I've got stuff for you, some of your childhood mementos. Wait, what? Well, we, do you remember the Hess truck that, that Betty and Goody gave you when you were about four? Yeah. Well, I brought that. Oh, no way! Well, I brought some things. Oh, somebody knitted a sweater. All right, this is from Obey to Mirror. Baby's almost here. To my favorite bear family, Owen, Amy, and Walter. Your new little bundle <laughs> of sunshine will fill your look home with happiness. That. Congratulations and best wishes, Obey to Mirror. But look at this sweater. Owen, oh, Amy, Walter Cobb, I hope this finds you all well. About five years back, my mom started knitting baby sweaters for all my really good <laughs> cousins who started uh, having babies. She does it all the time oh, now. Let's take a look. Look. Isn't that, it's a bear. Isn't this beautiful? It is. Oh, it's so oh, soft, it too. It is. It is wonderful. And the booties and the look at that hat. Aim, you got to see what someone's mom knitted us. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Let me oh. finish this. No, I really like this guy. I talked to him a lot on, on here. Uh, about one to five years, she started making little bears. I know I was going to see her mid-March, so I asked her to make one I, I could send to you. I hope you like it oh. and that it fits, or at the very least, your son to, will, uh, will be able to grow into it. Oh. Look at this. It's look. handmade. And Not it's a only bear. that, but look. Oh, that's Isn't so that, cute. darling. That's really pretty. <laughs> look at this. And the booties and the. Oh, that's so Here's cute. Here's another booty. <laughs> uh, that, isn't that just the cleverest? That's so sweet. I wish I could knit like that. That's beautiful. Well, you could. This is not a difficult pattern. It's this kind of thing, the creativity mm-hmm. that's added to it. That's, my my mom is not exactly lightweight in the knit department. <laughs> but no, this this is just that's you know all, all knit. This is called garter, and this is stocking net. But but that she thought to do this. That's and, so cute. And look, she matched all the browns. Oh my I gosh! Love it. It's such soft material. <laughs> yeah. too, so. It's unbelievable material. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you live streaming right Yeah. Now? Yeah, I just wanted to get my mom in a little bit to talk about homeschooling. Because oh, I just told okay. her that uh, Amy and I were thinking about homeschooling Walter and the next little man, who I think we may name William. That's what you were saying. Can you believe it goes back at least four generations? Well, that's, I wanted to honor your father. And um, yeah, and then there's a lot more in there going on. And I like Willie and Wally. Willie and Wally. All right, so tell me about homeschooling <laughs> with, uh, with Jason. Jason. Well, when Jason was uh, ready for kindergarten and we said to him, it's, you know, you're going to be going to kindergarten. And he said, well, I'll go into kin- kindergarten if one of you comes with me. Well, you know how that would work out. I said, no, you've got to go by yourself. He said, then I don't want to go. You can teach me at home. Yeah. Well, famous last words, uh, the day after he turned six, uh, the, um, oh, who was it called? It was John Canale. They're called, um, you know, the, the attendance officer yeah. knocked at our door and said, I understand that uh, your son has turned six and um, that that means that he has to be in school because the New York state law is that he is six, so therefore he has to be in school. I said, well, we're going to homeschool him this year. And he stood there at our side door. I I was holding you because you would have been too. And he said, well, then uh, we're going to have to um, 
arrest you for child neglect and take him from you. He went from, you've got a six-year-old to, we're going to arrest you for child neglect. Right, and you're holding a baby. And I was holding you. And I said, I, no, I don't think so. I, I said, I'm perfectly qualified. I have certification. And uh, no, he said, they have to be in the classroom. Well, that ended that conversation. I said, we'll look into this. <laughs> so then what did you do? Well, let's see. Jason was born in 76, so he would have been, that was 82. So you weren't quite two. So that was 1982. The only, there were two families homeschooling, both very religious. And you could homeschool if you were religious, have a certain religious bent. And the one family, um, the one family was very formally religious. In fact, the, the mother and father had seven children. They weren't Amish, but they dressed like Amish, Amish or Mennonites. Yeah. Or, and uh, so they weren't touched. They, they were in Mexico. They well, the Amish, quote, they came for the Amish, too. Well, They forced the Amish to uh, put their kids in school at some point. Then uh, the other family was a regular family, but went to one of the um, Christian churches, you know, the, yeah. you know what I mean, the evangelical churches. But they, um, uh, they were homeschooling. They, well, they ended up in court. They had to go to court. Did you have to go to court? No, we didn't have to go to court, but we had to hire a lawyer. and Just to have your own child. Six. Kindergarten, we're talking. And this I, is a woman with a master's degree. By that time, I didn't have my PhD yet. But no, I'd but been, it doesn't matter. Master's I is huge. Taught, I had taught in high schools for several years, and then I taught at St. Procopius College. And then when, you know, Jason was born, <coughs> I was a full-time mom. And uh, that didn't matter. It was all about the money. Yeah, explain about how it's about the money. Well, isn't it? obvious <laughs> <laughs> and also i think it's, it's not about education it's about the money well i've gotten real into john taylor gatto have you heard him uh no but i looked him up and i thought you know i could have written that that's what i know well a lot of the people I, that i get inspired by is what you kind of have been telling me my whole life like stefan molyneux didn't you like that conversation yes we had? yes Yes. Like that's why I was drawn to a lot of these people. Yes. It was it was why I was originally drawn to Hollywood and comedians was because of the independent thought or what I you believed thought. to be it was. And then when I started seeing all that, I, I, I the way you raised me was to um, think for yourself, you know, and, and adapt. You know, you were a feminist and still are in the sense that you thought it was, which is about well, being a good mom uh, or being well, like yes, whatever being you want to be. Uh, Yes, a person, because, you know, I grew up where it was hard. It was hard to be a woman, a female, and if you were married with children, uh, back then, people didn't hire you. Right. So, you know, I've been through a lot of different phases in the history yeah, yeah. of the United States totally. and working people. Like, you just wanted the option. Yes, right. And, uh, which is which has been accomplished. That's what that's why feminism and Leche League. We're talking about Leche League. Oh, Oof. I am just sick over Leche League. This is what red pilled my mother a little bit, and I say that in a funny way because. But what what uh, a lot of people don't get what the left has done, and so because you don't know where blogs are coming from or where a lot of yeah. publications are coming from or what some of these uh, sources are, and people get the media yeah. just bashes free thinkers all day long and people just believe bashing for some reason even people that, that think they know you but it really hits home when it's something someone really cares about and knows really well it's it's really hard to uh to indoctrinate and tell your story about the leche league and then i'll i'll fill in well, what just happened to it i f i found the leche league w well uh when we were pregnant with jason and then went to my first meeting when he was uh, six weeks old and never looked back and went for 42 year, 40 years until, you know, and then I became a leader, a La Leche League leader. Oh, look at you look great, Mom. In the, here, in the uh, stream there. Um, uh, became a leader and was a leader for decades. And um, and then... the. And then Amy Trisetter became a leader. Well, just tell the people what it, it's about. Well, I'm you know, you know I have to give the backstory. Of course. 
context. So <laughs> Midwestern there, Midwesterners. Yeah. Same with a lot of uh, Central Canadians. <laughs> it's all about the story. Like you can it say, is. what time is it? And they're like, well, my great grandfather, Dale, <laughs> used to talk about time. <laughs> And you'll get the time, but the time will be one hour after you asked. All right, so continue, please. Well, so Amy and I were co-leaders. And um, going along, you know, uh, Diana McRae had been the leader when I joined. And um, uh, then, you know, I became a leader. Amy became a leader. And we went along, along, along until it was about three and a half years ago we had, you know, the meetings, meetings were held once a month. And at one meeting, nobody came. Some people don't know what the, what it is, though. Talk, talk about oh, what La Leche League is. Oh, La Leche League was founded in 1957 by seven women, obviously all mothers, uh, from uh, the Chicago area when uh, breastfeeding was down to 5% and babies were getting sick, sick, sick. Oh, why are these babies getting sick? Oh, I don't know. There must be something wrong with the baby. Well, it was because they were being <laughs> the Jews. These form this formula <laughs> that was making them sick. So these seven women just uh, at a picnic one day got together and started. One was married to uh, an obstetrician, and he was in a partnership with a pediatrician. So uh, Mary White's husband was the uh, Dr. Gregory White. It's all about breastfeeding. And so he said, we will back you. You find, you start, you figure out what you want to do. And they had to call it La Leche League instead of the Breastfeeding Club. Because it's Spanish. Oh, yes. See the, because they could, were not allowed to use the word breastfeeding in 1957 in public. Right. La Leche. That means the milk. Yes. So. Yes. So it started and it went kaboom. People were just, women were just couldn't wait to get all this information. Because no one knew that what, what was happening. They would think that they, they weren't producing enough milk because their boobs were too small or they had clogged milk ducts or the, the baby was biting their nipple or all these like little problems before the internet existed. Yes. Uh, before the oh. internet existed, uh, there's no way of getting knowledge. And there were, and knowledge is power, it truly is. But that's, that's in a scarcity way. So... When, when people say the patriarchy, when my mom would say the patriarchy, she was right. Uh, and it was about doctors. It was about male doctors that were not acknowledging a lot of these things, that the woman was needed for raising a child. And that, that was, was in 50 uh, and that was true. That's why I get very angry at a lot of this leftist rhetoric is because they're taking actual things that were real and making it nonsense. So... Women needed a place to talk about women's stuff. So a lot of these women would come to uh, our house when I was a little kid. That's one reason why I think I have a lot of knowledge of women is not um, because I'm some Casanova. It's because I would just listen to women talk about their problems and what they liked out of life and all this stuff uh, with their boobs out, just, just breastfeeding. And it really just uh, let me into the real nature of what was really happening. And it's so funny how like... My mom was right about a lot. Like she was pushing for organic food. Um, she was doing yoga, you know, and the organic food stuff wasn't about, uh, it was cheaper back then. You know, it wasn't about, we weren't wealthy. We, I never had a new pair of clothes until I was in college. Oh, high school. J oh, JC Penny, we did hit up yeah. a couple times. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, so the, so tell me about Wichita. I just want to fill in the people. Oh, yeah, Wichita League was, yeah. was, 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 it, it, it was because actually what, what liberals pretend to be now was really needed in certain aspects of life then. And it's true. The male doctors would not admit that the mother is very, very, very important to raising babies. They still don't. Well, and guess what was in the, 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 the formula? Soy. Yes. Yeah, soy. Oh, and corn syrup. Yeah, it makes corn syrup and soy makes men... Fat women. All right, go on, Ma. Okay, so uh, let me see. Uh, three years ago. Three years ago. So we have these meetings every month, and they we we met at mothers' houses, and um, and the women felt the women be they felt that power in them, but they needed somebody to say yes. That is power. You are keeping a human being alive and thriving. And 
Uh, well, then, you know, of course, I could go into the holding and the touching, but I won't yeah. do that. Okay. So, uh, marsupial mothering, the, the carriers. Carriers came out because of La Leche Lake. And uh, so, um, uh, fast forward to about three and a half years ago, and, you know, we were having our meetings, and we were having fewer women coming, but they were still coming, so we kept having the meetings. And one day, nobody showed up. Okay, said, you know, Amy and I said to each other, okay, all right, well, everybody's busy. And so then the next month, nobody showed up. And we said, well, all right. And we tried it again, and nobody showed up. We kept going for a year because we couldn't believe. And the meetings then were always just you two. at my house. It was just like no one was there? No, but nobody but Amy and so me. So what was it? Apps. Well, Cell and also, phones. but now I sent you that what Leche League has become, and I think that's when you really started oh, realizing that, that was, some of I the points. I had no idea. Well, Leche no League idea. is now about trans men. Trans men and chest. Uh, oh chest yeah, fake fake feeding. fake breasts for men uh, feeding babies. It's nonsense. My mom was really heartbroken about that because this is something that she Awful. felt really Awful. good about and and worked hard at and i remember i used to have a t-shirt that said uh la leche league ecology with love because that's real ecology it's not this nonsense it's not the save the panda nonsense it's uh the best way if you want to help the earth and people breastfeed your kid you know like the amount of uh, nutrition your child will get it lowers the the the, the chance of a mother getting um, uh, breast, breast cancer, cancer by yes. a, an astounding amount. Astounding amount. Your child will have uh, the immune system of the mother. It's just, it doesn't... And they, they don't get sick as yeah. long as they're breastfeeding because the, what's going, the viruses outside go into the mother and then in through the milk and then into the baby, the antibodies. Also, uh, there, I don't know all the details, but I'll give the ones I know. There are some stomach cancers, and I don't know which ones, that breastfed humans will not get. Yeah. And I think it's also good for height. I mean, look at my size. <laughs> well, well, there are some short people who breastfed. Yeah, but does anyone really <laughs> notice those people? Someone in the chat was saying that the left also uh, uh, degrades the, um, the role of fathers. And 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 uh, the 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 fathers need to raise children. How what do you what do you feel about that? Well, it's interesting because um, oh. And by the way, uh, I'm not seeing the chat right now. So super chat me any questions you have for my mom. That way they'll stay. I I know, I don't want to offend anybody. Don't worry, mom. <laughs> but the father. Well, the father can change all the diapers. If no, no, I'm talking about like in the whole life of the child. Oh, I the think, whole well, life this of the is child. What, this is my oh. opinion. Well, well I'll let okay, you give no. yours first. All right, yes. Of course, mothers almost cannot breastfeed without a supportive father. T totally. Be, well, See, maybe, this is real feminism. It's not about yes. like hating men. Yes, it's yes. You need, you need you both. Need, you need both. Now, of course, there are the, the young women who give birth as single mothers, but maybe they have, um, maybe they live with her parents. Right. So they've got the grandparents to support them. You wanna know why the left likes isolated single moms? Cause who's the dad? The fucking state. Isn't that crazy? I got, where's my Justin Trudeau I couldn't calendar? Have done, I couldn't have done it without your dad. Of course. Because, oh, and then here's another thing that happened. When Jason was, when Jason was three months old, somebody selling insurance and we were transferring it was prudential and we were getting a new prudential insurance agent or he was being trained or something and they came the two guys came in the house one evening and there i am you know nursing jason and they're talking about you have to get insurance for this and you have to get insurance you know and your dad's not making a whole lot of money and of course i'm not making any because i am home with jason and so uh the one guy who was doing the training uh, said to me well, you're not working, so you had you had either better get this insurance or you'd better think about going back to work because otherwise, who's going to pay the bills? I said to him, I remember this so well, I will go on food stamps before I go back to work. I'm not leaving my baby with anybody else. Good for you, Mom. <laughs> 
well, that's your decision, but I'm telling you, can yeah, they, you believe it's that? It's fear tactics. Yes. It's the same. It's what they're doing all the time. You're you're in peril. You're in fear. Yes. Like they're coming to get you. Yeah. And, and, but and, they did try. Well, and then it, when he was six, they did try to get him, but they couldn't. Right. But, but they're the ones trying to get him. Not yes. the Not the thing that they're saying. The state. Yeah. And it's the uh, state. And they wouldn't let you teach your own kids. So that's why, like, what what do you think about um, homeschooling? But you did homeschool him for a year. and then I he, did because he said, I, and he was fine. You know, Jason, bouncy, bouncy. He was fine. And so I said, you're sure you don't want to go, you know, after Christmas? No, no, I'm doing fine. And he'd sit upstairs and I've saved all of those fabulous drawings he used to do when he yeah. was six. Yeah, yeah. Jason's an artist, but, you know, he's too busy with trees and he's busy teaching uh, English. And so he doesn't do too much art. Uh Beautiful, and he was doing that and mazes. I, I don't know if you ever. Oh, I he remember. He would draw books of mazes. I remember he would uh, make entire Star Wars worlds <gasps> with paper. Oh, that that phase. No, he's oh. the he's the creative one in the oh. family. I'm just learning we how to do pictures. it for a living. Yeah. <laughs> like Jason's oh. more creative than me. It's he a fact. He did the and he did an entire bedroom of Star Wars out of pieces of paper. I remember the steps going up and the characters. And uh, somebody came over one day and I said, you know, we can't use this room. And he said, he'll take it down one day, let him go. I was getting a little practical. We were, you know, down to two bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> and most of our books were in the other one. And he said, let him, let him, he'll take it down. Yeah. And he kept going and I said, okay, okay, good lesson in patience here. And one day he said, okay, I'm done. You can take it down. And he didn't care that I took it down. Yeah, it's almost like that Buddhist practice. Will, will, yes, will the those... Mandela, yeah, yeah, the yeah. sand. All the, all the creations. Did you ever see any he made out of rocks at Lake Ontario? Oh, I bet not. Well, he did them uh, in college. He did them a as a father. To, you know, when they come, he'd say, okay, got to go to the lake. And he'd go down, and then he'd say, all right, I want everybody to come see what I mean. One day it was a dragon, a dragon that went on for, I don't know, 12, 15 feet out of the stones and rocks he found, you know, at Lake Ontario, all the way out. And I said, Jason, that can't be preserved. He said, I know that, but people are going to enjoy it now, and if somebody needs to wreck it, okay. There was a reason they needed to wreck it. He did not, he can, he's not a hoarder. I've adopted that, I, I have that uh, quality as well, especially with uh, online stuff, and people are like, you know, you can't keep saying what you're saying, or they'll take down oh. all the tweets you've ever done. Oh. I'm like, let it go, you know, or like uh, YouTube, where it's like, please download my stuff and keep it around, but like, if it's time to burn, it burns. You have to be like that. You have to, or you'll just go because nothing lasts. Than you are. Like not even our life. So it's like if you don't get in touch with that feeling, you know. And and the things that I I do hoard would be life, like my family's. Yes. Like I would do anything for them, yes. not stuff. You know, sometimes to my own detriment. Like people have laughed where they'd be like, "Oh, you left your phone." In the hotel, like, okay, so we have to change the flight. I'm like, just let it go. People are like, what? I'm like, and then over time, sometimes people understand the benefit of that because it's not like waste of money. It's like in, in the way I think, you have to be able to let that stuff go or else I can't do what I do because it's pretty high-level thought what I'm up to these days. Yes, it is. I know. Every once in a while, I, I'll get your podcast then somewhere, and I... I love it because, and I, that's what I loved about the Stephen Mo, Stephen Mo, Molyneux uh, talk. I, you weren't so scattered. Sometimes on your podcast, you know, you go, duh, 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 duh. Yeah, yeah, it's because of the, I'm like, you're watching the, the uh, yeah, you but, know, that, that, but that's part of it. it. also supports the show. Like, without that, I can't exactly, really pay for anything. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But when somebody's questioning you, oh my gosh, Owen, I thought, <laughs> he's really an intellectual. <laughs> you know, I, but not I in the that. bad commie way, though. Oh, I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. You just, I, I'm, I, your mother, and you are going to be 38 next week, am amazed at, at how, um, what word do I want here? How ordered your thoughts were and how profound they were. Oh, thanks, Mom. Yeah. Well, I think what it is is, uh, 
You know where you're going, and that's why you can let go of a phone you forgot in the. You know. Right, right, but the chaos is uh, is important for art, where it's like I oh, have to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like I absolutely. have to let myself go into. Yes. Where I'm emotional on a stream, yes. or I'm like trying to work out an idea, or I'm angry, or I'm like don't oh, I can't it's find not a clip. That. No, I know because out of that. You get all this new oh. stuff, and then when you have time to sit and be quiet yes. and have nothing in your mind, then you begin to start ordering oh. it, and then that, and then you build yes. your whole oh, character on it. Absolutely. And so that's uh, yes. why it's uh, Jordan Peterson really changed my life. We got, we were all actually thinking about naming our son Jordan after Peterson, but no, it's a little Jewy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, the 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 the. The line between order and chaos is the hero's journey. It's the individual's yes. journey. Because the thing about yes. hero is the word hero, yes. it almost sounds like you're being arrogant when in yes, fact it's the archetype. And yes. it's actually not something a lot of people would even want to be. And it's that person who was on a journey. Right. Right. And it's there, the, it, there has the to be loss. Yes. That's why like, oh. when people are like, oh, oh yeah, yes. you're a hero. It's like... no. Not, that's like saying, no. that's, that's why people give props to firefighters and stuff. It's because like you get burned. Yes. And it's like the acceptance of loss, the or, acceptance you know, of pain. Get long bronchi bronchitis and Yeah. It's also like, it's and... also like the, um, but that's the only way you can really feel anything is to accept it. Like to accept loss, accept struggle, accept burdens, accept exactly. chaos. And that's what one uh, aspect of the right uh, was missing a bit in art, I think. And that's one reason why me and Steven Crowder get along so well is uh, there's an orderliness to conservatism where it's people are like, yes. but th that that's absolutely necessary for society, which is what yes. we're losing right now. Yeah. So there's an orderliness to it. You can't run it. society on chaos. Right. And that's yeah. why... That's why you need the artist. He has the, the open... He's like oddly crazy empathetic. Like he's an empath. Oh, he's like, he, oh, well, he's just, he feels a lot, which is what one reason why he's so ordered and why like, um, and, and I have an odd conservatism to me, despite my, uh, yeah. openness. Like I, I think that rules exist for a reason. And I think that, uh, chaos is, is not a place I want to live, you know? So that's what drew him and I to each other is because like some people more on the conservative spectrum what they miss is almost the acceptance of chaos and being able to work through it. Like Steve yes. Jobs and Wozniak were a perfect match because Wozniak was, uh, could, was just inventing things for no reason. Like I didn't have a business plan. Like Crowder and some of these guys and like oh. Rogan and some of these guys have helped oh. me understand oh. how to structure my life without needing Hollywood money. Because I have no idea how to do that stuff. Like I was yeah. always naturally... Fine. Like I've never, you know, You've, I, I've ne you, you know, understand money. Yeah, though. from the time you, I was a paper boy, yes. I was always. You yeah. found somebody was stealing money from the paper boys at the Pale Times. Mom, I'm a quarter Jew. <laughs> That's my new theme of the week. I can't stop doing Jew jokes. But. It's like you like for art. That's one reason why I think um, the right was not very associated with um, art, and the left was more, yes. was because there's a chaotic element to art. But see, once. The Overton window shifted yep. so far yep. that the left is now ordered in madness. Like yep. now it's I, not. I know. I, right. And that's never happened, I don't think, in history, yeah. has it? Yeah, communism. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's the okay. ultimate authoritarian oh, yes. boot. Okay. Is, is this, okay. If you keep going left. Okay. That's why things have to be in balance. Yes. Because it's like if you keep going right. You see, get, that's when you get. Yeah. Yeah. Tyranny. Well, you know, tyranny. Well, in, well, it depends on the theory. Well, because uh, Peterson wants to use the example of ancient Egypt was uh, was a, a tyrannical a, a tyrannical order, but see that's why there's so many different axioms where it's like that's too much order where you're just simply building right. perfect pyramids right. for no reason right. almost. Uh, there's like a madness to that, and then, but if you go on the different spectrum on the personal liberty spectrum, which is more the Stefan Molyneux spectrum, he's extreme right to the point of. Anarcho-capitalism, which is no government, where it's every yeah, but 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 he can do that because he's in the minority. To run a country or a society, you have to have structure and order and laws, and then it's the artists who can be in chaos right. to bring order out of that, or somebody like Stephen Molyneux, who believes in anarchy and no government. He couldn't do that if. There were no 
government. Well, another thing about him anarchy. is he's so right that it doesn't like this is the it doesn't it, fit on it. <laughs> right. This is almost like the thing about uh, it's almost like socialism, but for but like the good hearted like the 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 it's like if if, if like socialism what? is Satan and oh. and and anarcho capitalism mm. is God. It's almost like that where they're both not possible on earth in a way, but right. but like his whole thing is 100% consent where it's like, yeah, it's, it's called the non-aggression principle. Yes. And exactly. he's right. The math works out. This is what I think it's missing is um, dealing with, with complete idiots. But we're not exactly right, because that we, we are flawed. Right. Like we there's so many things that just go, math. but what's the yeah. rule? And yeah. it's like. Oh, there isn't yeah. one. You get to make your life yeah. as long as you don't infringe on someone else. Yeah. They're like, but what's the rule? And it's almost like that weird. I, it's not on me to uh, criticize him because I, yeah. he's been right so many times in the past when I thought he was wrong that I'd give him a big berth. But at the same time, I don't know how it's functional. Anyway, forget yeah. that. But what we're okay, talking yeah. about was, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer these Male doctors second. looking to push me, but yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, we'll, yes. We'll, we'll get to that one. Yes. Second. I just got to finish this one thought. Okay. So the liberal uh, artist has to exist within the structure of conservatism or else everything goes reverse. Yes. Which in yes. right now we're in reverse land. And that is uh, anathema to this country. Right, that's what got me more religious. I believe is the lack of religion now, because like yes. I could toy with, you know, mocking uh, the concept of God or mocking things in the Bible mm -hmm. and things like that, because I felt that society all agreed on good and evil, and I could play with ideas. And then once I realized that there's now this almost tyrannical atheism and science is the new priesthood, it really made me like oh, cling yeah. to my actual yeah. beliefs, where yeah. I'm like it, it boiled off all my. The yeah. dead wood of, uh, yeah. of not, where I'm like, oh, no, guys, there is truth in this world. Like, there yes. are things that are true. Right. And that, which is a good thing for me to, to go back to that. All right. There's some, there's yes. some super chats right. we're going to answer. Right. All right. Dom, Networking Bear says, who is your favorite bear besides Big Bear? Mama Bear? Just, just say Networking Bear. Oh. <laughs> I'm to say Networking Bear, uh, Dom. Do you know a name that nobody, I think, has taken? And it's interesting. Um uh, because it's the name of a coffee that comes from our Green Planet uh, food store, Grin and Barrett. Isn't Gr that Grin and Barrett. Well, I was almost going to title my special that. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This uh, someone said open mail with your mom. I just opened one from Obed Amir. That was uh, his mother knitted our next son. This beautiful. Yes, the brown. Oh, yeah, open more done. too though. Well, what's his answer? Yeah, but too. part of the witch trials. The male doctors said to themselves in the 13th century. Oh, I think we can make a profit out of these women having babies. And that's the midwives were then called witches and they were the ones burned at the stake and the, and they had, oh yes, I wrote about that in my See, book. See, that's when I used to think the left had a point, but really it wasn't, it was disguised because the family unit of women, you know, are, are in control of the life in the home and the way the home functions and, and what, the, you know, and the just the the the, the root of life, yes. the start of yes. life. Yes, yes. It's like when you give women that that control and men the control of uh, going out and acquiring resources to bring home, so the woman feels safe enough to raise the child. That yes. that structure is so important that out of that, you can see it being torn by different forces. But that's the thing that people have to always focus on, because like that example of the the witches, that really is. What the left complains about now, like uh, patriarchy, like uh, not allowing women freedom, you know, not letting women give birth to their own yeah. babies, not letting women yeah. advise women, not letting, like that type of stuff really has happened in history. Well, yeah, that's where La Leche came right, out. Right, but now it's a lie. Now it's yeah. like women have been stripped of their like uh, uh, natural desires of wanting to be moms oh. and wanting to, now feminism is about, uh, dwindling away in, a, in an office without babies and just without any help and without any completion to your life. And don't get, and this goes without saying, you don't need babies to complete your life. All these things go without saying. Because look at the women who- But, it ha but it, in my opinion, it's, it's a big part of it. Who have babies 
And then it's the Handmaid's Tale. And then off they go to be raised in a daycare center. By Isn't Heaven that the irony? The Handmaid's Tale, which is now being used as propaganda <laughs> against conservatives, is literally a warning about it, what the left is pushing. Yes. That they strip yes. your baby from you. They make you a machine. What oh, do you think Fred. they're doing? They take the woman yep. and, and put her in the mines, yep. metaphorically, yes. to pay more taxes to the yep. government, to break, yep. the, to break the family. And that's what they use against the right wing, who are the ones uh, preaching family values. It, it's, it's absolute nonsense. All right, this is from, oh, this is from Water with Crowder Shop. <laughs> Run away. There's a bunch more stuff. Oh, by the way, uh, my grandmother, my mother's mother was oh, a midwife. Sweet. And she birthed her 11 at home, and then she helped the other women birth. Now, I was, I was birthed in my doctor's office, actually, but my brother was birthed at home. Socialism always ends in starvation oh. and genocide. Yes. You, you can get those at unbearableshop.com. I, I took way too long to open that, because now I'm boys with Brandon. Um, I don't know what this is. Well, you know, scissors help. It's even nice in Scotland. <laughs> Here what it is. is that? Here it is. Well, you open it. Open it up, huh? Hey, Owen, made a bear for you. I thought it would be a merch thing for you, but then I was like, man, it's not really profitable at all. But have one anyway. Hope it prints correctly. Feel free to show it, but please don't shout me out. No worries. Oh. No worries, oh. Gary, but Gary Steen. No, I'm just kidding. I want to check it out. How great is this? Isn't that darling? It looks like a Lego, doesn't it? You see why the bears are so cool? Because yes. like, because this message, look at all they made for cause you, you would, cause, here. Because you attract, like, when you talk about this stuff, which is what you raised me to do, you attract <laughs> people that are like, "This is what I like. I'm gonna do it." Versus the mindless zombies of human beings. Yes. They're, they're they're literally yes. just they're 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 farm animals. You are tapping into what apparently I tapped into you when you were growing up and Jason when he was growing up. That's what you're doing to these people here. It's not that you're forming the cult that people want to try to say you're forming, you know. Well, no, well, that's cult. the irony. There was a small amount of people that really, I think, wanted a cult. Sure. And, and when they realized right. it wasn't because a cult, they, they like hated me for it. Because they want somebody else to do their thing. Right. No, that's a real thing. Like there I was know. a few bears that were like, <laughs> they were like, oh, no, you're our... our... Oh, totally a cult. No, a I know. Cult. Well, that's the thing that happens. It, like, it, it's, it's funny because it, it's almost probably how we are you. animals. He says, oh, don't, don't call, call people, people animals. We that's are. A... Oh, no, that was a, that's a joke. Oh, that is a joke. You, oh. you got to let me interpret the chat because oh, right. it gets weird in there. The sarcasm <laughs> okay. le levels get like okay. really intense. <laughs> Just put an M in front of it and you've got mammals. Cult Not is really. root of culture. Interesting. Like this, Owen is oh. the all father. That's sarcasm. You see what I mean? But we love your son. Oh yeah, no, there's a lot of genuineness in there, and people are saying that you're. Uh... But what you do is you're bringing out a lot of art and people that oh, weren't Mom. being I mean, brought look around here. It's it's like that's all it is. Yes. Like like all this stuff on here, like other people drew, all of it. Like all of this. Like, I'll, let me show you some stuff. Yeah, that oh, art you know what? You know how Jordan Peterson has a room with all the Nazis and the socialists? Yeah, in it? yeah. You're going to have to have a room in your uh, next house just for bears. Oh, I know. Oh. I want to start a whole state called Bearizona. Oh. Well, you know, do you know Bill Gates bought, I don't know, 30,000 acres and he wants to start his own town in Arizona? Really? Yeah. Uncle Ron told me about it. He was reading what, what's about his, it. Uh, what's his game plan? Just to start his own town. That sounds a little culty, doesn't it? I mean, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> but the people who would hate you when you said it's not a cult would be the ones who want you to do your thinking for them. That's why. I or had they to want leave to be a, cult leaders. I had to leave the Leche League. Yeah, or they want to and be. That, or they, they want saved like. Because this and is one you. thing. This is one thing that happened to me. Is when Jason, I was when I was on Twitter. Know? People were attracted by the power of it because I would be, oh, yeah. I would be talking to the most powerful people in the world at times, you yeah. know. Oh, look and, at that! Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm going to show it to the guys too. And when I lost the Twitter, don't get me wrong, I was angry at the oh. offense of it and the lack of the ability to exchange ideas. But at the same time, don't look at any of these yet. I want to surprise oh, you. Oh, okay. But at the same time, it wasn't okay, about nice. the power. Like the, all the followers, it was like, who cares? 
It's kind of like what we're talking about with Jason. You, know, you can look up now. Oh, okay. It's kind of like what we're talking about with Jason with the, um, yeah, it'll burn. It'll go away. But some people reacted so bad. Angry over Now, you know, Jason can get angry. Yeah, Mom, <laughs> I think we know where we get it from. <laughs> but the things that I thought he'd be upset about, he isn't. <laughs> like what? Well, people destroying his art. Because he said there, there's, they have a reason to do that. Maybe they wanted to build their own. And do you know he was right? There was one. I went down after he had done There's his. also reasons to be angry sometimes. Well, yes. But they, I went down and somebody had taken all of those stones and built something else. Exactly. And that's the thing. Is like, tell, tell me the story again about the librarian thing where they were oh, trying to get you to fire somebody and no, you wouldn't. No, 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 no. That was, it was that... Uh, you know, I went in and volunteered at, at Kingsford Park Library so that I, you know, have a beat on you and Jason. Uh, every Friday afternoon, I would go in because Mrs. Heckathorn thought mothers should be in the in the library to help. And um, uh, one of the subs came in with a petition to sign for uh, this teacher who was getting a real hard time at another elementary school over at Layton. Yeah. And um, they wanted to save her, keep her in that position. And I said, sure, I'll sign it. And this other teacher said to me, you'd better be careful what you sign because you might not ever get a job in the school district. And I said, my child is not gonna be a sacrificial lamb just because I might not get a job in the school district. Because she had kind of given up her kids in yeah, order have you, to have, teach. Have you seen that uh, Forgetting Christopher Robbins or Remembering Christopher Robbins or whatever, that the story of uh, Winnie the Pooh? No. It's a heart-wrenching movie, but that was one thing that happened is is uh, the, the little boy got famous from the dad stories yeah, of the Hundred Acre yeah. Woods. And there's a, a scene where, where the dad was like, I said I would, you asked me to uh, write you a, Draw, uh, uh, write you a story and he was mm -hmm. like for me though oh. and I mean I was a mess watching that Oh, because it's like yeah and he goes oh. and, and the dad was like we had something special and he goes and you sold it Oh, you don't think that hits home like it's just like woo hoo hoo alright but look at all of the millions who have benefited from well, I know, but it's about exposing your kid. That's why I like to, when, oh, I, when yeah. I show stuff about like Walter and stuff, yeah, it's just yeah, a show, yeah, yeah. but that's also important. I've thought about this a lot where it's like, it's important to yes. show people family because the, yes. the media doesn't. The media, it's, oh. okay, look at this, look at this. I love that. Have you I seen just, this? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because I think that's you. I know, isn't that the, the funniest thing? Is like the interpretation. This is why I never censor art, ever. Even if it bothers you or you don't understand or anything. I thought I was pulling someone up. <gasps> oh, that's me being pulled up yeah, by the bears. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, because yes. the archetype of the bear yes, is a bigger yes, than any of yes, us. Yes, yes. So, so in my yes. mind, that was. I mean, I'm getting jammed up. Like that's the thing about art. It takes you to yes. a place that's bigger than than. Yes. Like that's me being saved th by the art. I yeah, think. and that's what makes art great. Okay, here's here's some more. <laughs> and it's and it's and that individual is anybody, right? Like that that's but, me in that image, but at the same time, right, it's right. And that's what makes art amazing. That's what makes uh, comedy amazing is when it could be anybody. All right, I'll show you another one. That's um, this one after I got kicked off Twitter. Yeah, that's I I'm eating the tweets. Link. Yeah. 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 Yes, the blue bird of, of uh, Twitter. Twitter, yeah, the symbolism. I, and it, so people just make this. I know, but and I. And I there's a bunch more. I just haven't been able to categorize them in a while. I've been uh, just because I'm, I'm getting my book out and I'm like starting this. Um, you know, I produced uh, Nimmer's new special and yes. I'm, I'm I'm starting a news network. <laughs> And I'm a dad, about to be another one. Yes, and you're about to move. You know, it's uh, yeah, we're looking to sell a house, buy a house. It's so it's it's been hard to stay organized, but um, I know it'll be fine. That's the acceptance of chaos thing. Because if I didn't just accept the mistakes of of it all, and just every now and then not really knowing what I'm doing, yep. I'm done. Yep. 
I can't. But uh, don't don't you know you know this? A lot of people have to live. It's the expression inside the box and outside the box. And a lot of people cannot live outside. And the you box. need both. You need both. <laughs> that's, that's why, why Stephen Molyneux can do what he does and say what he says. Yeah, because he's a he's an individual. And yes. that's what people love yes. about that's what people love about Rogan too. You know, I think Steph's done like Steph's more he like thinks through stuff longer, but Joe yes. has that shorter impulsive fighter thing about yeah. him <laughs> that that you can live vicariously through like an actual man. All right, look at this. This is uh, Jordan yes, Peterson you releasing the bear. Me that. Yes. Oh, so you've seen a lot of these. All right, yes. Cool. But it's just the uh the art Gotta love the art. All right, we're gonna roll out of here soon. I know yeah. you gotta go see Jason. Well, I I told Mary I'd help her with the kids. In uh, what, you guys have anything else from my ma? Uh, hat tip to Artling. Yeah, Artling. Artling is the man. Yeah, he's the one who did a lot of those, isn't he? Yeah. Um, uh, Tessa has a three-hour rehearsal for this ballet, and Amy has to take all three kids because you know Jason's up a tree somewhere. So. Yeah. Um, I said I'd help her. Oh, Natalia just said she's a Brazil bear. Oh. <laughs> uh, Jordan Peterson is trending on Twitter. People are attacking him. <gasps> of course they are. You should see what they've been writing about me, Ma. It's, it's insane. Your mom is awesome, says Brandon. <laughs> Much love. We love your mom. Your mom is rad. Your mom is awesome. See, remember what I was telling you about that your audience, like, because she, she was going through a time when she was really frustrated teaching. Because their kids seemed like brain dead. Well, and they, they were, were brain dead. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just trying to be nice to the kids, but yeah, they're brain dead. And I'm like, Mom, your, your, your audience isn't a state school with... All right, what is this? I painted you as a bear. Search AA Artist 90 on Insta. I don't know how to search Instagram, and I can't get it on my computer. Can you, um, can you email me? What you painted to why didn't they laugh at gmail.com within the next five minutes? I can I can show it to all the people. Uh, John, hi there, mom. Uh, Big Bear, great show. You should debate contrapoints. She's halfway sane lefty with over a hundred thousand subs. Do it. I'd love to. I'd love to. I don't know what that means, but I would. I love debate. I, I know. I, like it's just so much of the left has been. D the, debunked. Well, didn't you? Did you read the last comic strip I sent you from Pearls Before Swine? That's exactly what it was. Yeah, let me see if I got it on here. I, I think sent I it have, yesterday. I, I think I know I added it. I just don't know if I took it off. Because that's a, it's it called comic. When I no, it was I think I said no, 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 it's in my notes here. Pearls Before Swine comic or no comic? Per, I yeah, forget. I loved it. I'm, I'll put it up right now. Because I'm, anytime I send you one of those, it's exactly what you're going through. Because it's so important to know you're not alone. Oh, I know. That's Even one thing that motivates me so alone. much. You have to stand alone. And you have to fight alone. And the amount of people that secretly support you and won't stand beside you is, is jaw-dropping. Especially people yeah. with power. It's like it's kind of like letting your art get burned, how that's important. It's like, what do they think the power gets them? You know, That's someone right. I'm not going to uh, say their cards. name because I really love this person and I'm not even going to say who it is because House there's just cards. no reason to. Um, was telling me that like, uh, you know, that, that, that I, I, it, I'm i not great for their brand or something. And it's like, because I, I, I go down like roads that, but, and I'm like, <gasps> but, but do you agree with me? And of course this person agree with me. And I'm like, what is a brand going to do for you? I'm like, what do you think we're cattle? A brand. Great for your brand. It's like, what do you need? Like, what what is it that you think you're missing by so saying what you that believe? That person doesn't want you around him. No, kinda, yeah, because it's like, um, because he's trying to really fight against things, and like, I'm too wild, and I'm like, uh, seeing it. I've said so many things, but it was when I got kicked off Twitter. So many people looked at me different because I didn't have the same power. But in the, but what they don't realize is my my audience keeps growing. Twitter is a joke. It's a, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's all just so silly. And it's like face, we have so many more. Facebook uh, is becoming that way. I can't find your. I, I know I, I can it find it though. It was just yesterday. I know I have it. Um. They just don't understand. They really don't. It's like they don't get what what really matters or what really holds value. And the bears, every day I get like a hundred people saying, "Can I be this bear, oh, bear or that bear?" Yeah. And um, and they're good, strong people, like part of communities that work hard and have families, and it's growing. 
and the listeners are growing and the watchers are growing and and all they see yeah. is this on Twitter they'll see that like a famous person follows me or retweeted me and they're like, oh, I want him on my team. It's like, that stuff is noise. Like some of the people that have changed the world or like invented things or said things were just out of nowhere. Yeah. And it's like, well, then what? I can't find him. I know I had it too. (laughs) It's a great, I can, I can redownload it right now. I can tell that you definitely want to peep it. Well, just because it's so exactly what you're saying now. And and he's Pearls a, before swine. I love that. Yeah. Don't throw pearls before swine. I throw pearls before swine now because I just have so many pearls. I don't even care. I'm like, maybe oh, the swine will eat it. I don't know. There's honey. Hi, honey. Honey. Because if the swine don't eat the pearls, it's not really and anything off my back. And here's. It's like I have like warehouses of pearls. I'll throw them in front of swine all day long. Oh, YouTube just created a copyright claim. Oh, well, that's not a big surprise. I'm sure they'll try and kick me off again in no time. All right, let's uh, let's find your comic, Mom, and then we'll uh, we'll go to Jason's. Yeah. Pearls before swine comic. Here we go. There it is. Okay, so I will show it to the peeps. All right, what I just did is called a screenshot. Oh. Hi. All right, uh, my mom sent me this. Pardon me, but I was offended by something you said. And this dude says, I was more offended. And this other person says, I was even more offended. And this mouse said, is this a competition? And the woman said, yes, nowadays the most offended person wins. The mouse said, this is a very annoying era. And the woman says, now I boycott your (laughs) smug little face. That's hilarious. It's true. I'm more offended. Like to me, offense is weakness. Like if someone says I'm oh, offended, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. then you have no control of your own emotions. Yeah. Like, what are you five? No, I mean Walter has more control over his emotions than a lot of people. Like, we'll sit and have breakfast somewhere, and he's more well behaved than a lot of these like adults. He's just like, thank you, Ditu. And these adults are like, I don't like what you're talking about. Oh, I, we got a. Uh, a super chat. Okay. Mama Bear taking care of the Cubs. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Owen and Mom. Hi to Amy, Jason, Walter, and all. Oh, there's little Benny. There's a little hat. Uh, hey there, Mom. You should, yeah, oh, counter counterpoints. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Painting. Did you oh. send me the uh, the painting? I'm going to check on this person's bear, painting. Because I, I really like to show off other artists. Yes, yes. Because art right now is not real art. It's all BS. Like... Uh, all the songs that are popular, oh. it's all the same four chords. That's why oh, I, I make fun I ca- of it so much. I got intensely. a couple of your pocket where you were you were explaining, you know, the 12-note scale versus the six, eight-note scale. I loved it. Thank you. Um, that dude didn't send me the, the bear. No. Hang on. Let me check in. Air Bear. Where are you, buddy? Uh, thanks, Tom. Are you sending it, Air Bear? He said he did. Why didn't they laugh at gmail.com? Let's check again. Maybe send it to another. We're going to find it. I just sent it. He said he just sent it. Yeah, isn't it nice uh, having a smaller chat sometimes? Because that's the thing. Like right now, there's 287 people. Usually at 11, there's 1,000 now. (laughs) And that's just on this platform. Well, so yeah. it gets real chaotic. Yes. And this is really nice. I feel like this is good because it doesn't attract the, the evil trolls either. Well, first time I didn't get oh. the notification. Oh, yeah, I'm shadow banned right now. That's why, that's why I, do, uh, oh. uh, I do it at the same time every day because that's the only way around shadow bans is uh, every day at the same time people know to check in. Oh, check no your trolls other today. Folder. I want to check your other folder. I don't have another folder. Oh, here we go. Painting from Air Bear. Got it. This is awesome. <laughs> All right, let's let's show the let's show the let's show the people. Let's show the people what, what people see me as. That's me after one beer, Mom. <laughs> Tell a story about the the original bear, Dale Dale Troy. Oh gosh. We need oh. one Dale Troy story before we go. Well. Uh, let me just show this bear. And then I'll tell you how he lost his two fingers on his left hand. When men were men. <laughs> well, he was about 12. 
Yeah, but a 12 year old back uh, then yeah. is more of a man yeah. than a man now. And that's real. Like nowadays, it's like it's seen as masculine yeah. to be a baby. Oh, there's there's Wally. Do you hear Wally? Let's say hi to Wally. Well, he'd rather stay here. Isn't it coming up for Yeah, the, but it, it's technology. Oh. <laughs> and I know you understand. My mom, it took her, uh, what, a year to understand Netflix? And now I forgot because... Dude, the, you're not missing anything. Netflix now sucks. It, that circle kept going too many times. It won't let me show it. I know what I can do. Screenshot it. There's different formats. You see, this is why I just started spiraling. Is because it's like these rules that I don't yeah. respect. That's the, that's the liberal in me. Where I respect the existence of rules, but I don't like nonsense rules. Well, I know what you're saying. Yeah, like I before you accept after anyway, C I'll and these 90 the other times. About, yeah, about homeschooling. We had to get a lawyer. Then we went to see this family in a farmhouse. I don't know where, you know, south, everything south of Oswego. But we went somewhere on a goat trail. And, I, you know, you were still a, a baby toddler. And there was Jason. And we talked to this family. And they Boom. gave us some hints. And they were a regular family. And, um, and so, uh, you know, he wasn't taken from us, but, oh, I was so angry over that. And do you know Karen Trissetter homeschools her for? Oh, that's cool. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that a cool picture? Just tell one story about when, oh. uh, when Dale oh. died and people told you about uh, what oh. he did with the... Uh, oh, with the coal? With the coal. Yeah, come on. Hey, Wally. Hi, Walter. It's Grandma Jean. Hi. Hi. And here's here's, here's Danny. Here's Oliver. Make sure you eat some food. We are. We're just gonna do yeah. one story and then we're done. Hi. Yes. Hi. Just five minutes. Five yeah. minutes. The people want to hear yeah. about Dale Troy, the original bear. That's w Robbie. Okay. What do you want to hear? Which? Oh, Robbie. that we did not know about him. Okay. So Until so he's he a seven, seven figure a seven figure eight. lead miner, eight fingered lead miner who once uh, <laughs> knocked a priest out during yeah, church. Right. Well, after he came to our house, that was his. Mistake. Oh, he knocked him down after. after we, Father came, but, came to our house. Wasn't after. it because the, he turned the fan yeah. off? Yeah. No. And, yeah, he turned. No, he kept the fan on, and Father Haas said, "Turn that off so people can hear what I have to say." And he said, "It's too hot for people to hear what you have to say," and so he said, "You will turn that fan off," and he said, "No, I won't." And he hit him. He hit him. I was there. And, there's, and they still were friends. Didn't they still go to church there? Oh, yeah. Still that friends. Didn't matter. And still of course, cool. Nobody apologized. No one apologized. <laughs> All right. But so. With what he did was, we got a letter uh, from a neighbor who was even older than dad. Dad died at 80. Um, and she told us how my dad used to go and get coal from a guy who sold coal in the Depression and that this guy was a real greedy person and so he didn't want to give it to dad and you know my dad got mad again and it was a bear ada said a good-hearted maniac yes although he had some trouble with mr zubler he still he said i am taking that coal and he brought it to me and he said uh, she said otherwise i not i might not be here today because he's the one who kept the furnace going in the winters in Benton. Yeah, my, my and we dad. we didn't know that. Yeah, he did. Like, a, only after he died, all these people Never, came out and yes. said that, like, uh, my grandpa would, uh, would and he was uh, a poor Grand man. Spare Owen's mom. <laughs> and he was like when a. When did a, you move from Wisconsin to New York? 1974. I want, oh, you can be verified. You don't have to pay to be verified. It's just when the chat's crazy. Uh, I don't see anything that isn't a super chat, but right now it's a nice mellow time, so we're oh, cool. Yeah, okay. so Jordan, say what, what bear you want to be, and we'll bear fight right now. All right, so um, go on, Mother. What? What were we talking about? Oh, no, just about how, like, uh, he would threaten people to give po people coal. Yes, yes. It was never because he was a bully. He... Well, he had to help with his parents. Welcome, Bisco Bear. Go ahead. He had to help with his parents, too, and that just was part of him. His brother and sister didn't help a whole lot, but he, that was my dad. But the only, he had no tact. He had no, uh, you know, suavity. <laughs> when there was somebody who might die, he would do whatever it took to make sure that person didn't die. But if the person then didn't die, he was going to put the fan on if he wanted to, or else he'd hit him. Yes. <laughs> I yes. love people like that. Beca and, and, 
back then there was no apologizing. I mean, that Welcome was... Welcome, Berserk Shirt Bear. All right, oh, and the final thing, uh, uh, talk about him as an artist. This oh, is what yeah, I, I, this went, is what oh, I think so many I bears was, are oh. like here. Is, uh, I, sh I could have brought that, uh, that. You'll get that book one of the Like Jason's days. a laborer. I've been yes. a laborer. A lot of bears are laborers. And, uh, and, he, and he, his artistry. He could draw the human, the inside of the human body. In his spare Free time hat. from lead mining. Yes, he was a lead miner. Well, he then he became that, a coil cleaner. Yeah, and that was, you know, at least he didn't have to go down under the earth. But that was so hard. And he did it to keep the family together. Well, I'm going to tell you, too, my dad was quite a serious alcoholic, which I did not find out till I was 45 years old. And that caused me... That's like me finding out I was a quarter Jew. Yeah, well... I had to go into counseling when I find that out because then my my childhood made sense because I had been talking with a good friend, Joan Donovan, who told me how her mother was an alcoholic and how, uh, you know, and so I started looking up about uh, alcoholics and children of alcoholics and there is the adult child of the alcoholic. And I'm reading through all these things and I'm saying, but that's me and my parents aren't alcoholics. I didn't know that dad was. And I can remember, I remembered back, I was an adult, um, I, I was out of college uh, and home for a vacation for something, and we sat at the kitchen table, and he just said, you know, and he pointed his finger, he said, he had a dime on the table, and he said, you know, we were down to our last dime, and that's when I knew that we couldn't even buy a loaf of bread anymore, I had to do something. And that was him telling me that he was an alcoholic, and I didn't realize that he said that's when I had to become a night watchman at the pea factory and, because he had the DT so bad. And he quit at, on his own when I was seven and Ron was five. On his own. He after quit. Being a, and then he ended up being a coil cleaner. That means you clean the, the beer taps. He had to be in taverns every day of the week. Eight hours a day, every and day. Never touched it again. Never touched it. And because he couldn't sleep from the DTs, yeah, he was. He a, became a security guard. Yes, <laughs> yes, he had a gun. At the pea factory, mind he had to guard the peas. Didn't he own a? Uh, not own, but didn't wasn't he like a part of uh, Reds, the poker parlor? My grandfather Dave Troy owned a poker parlor. Really? Yes. But didn't they like lose it or something? Wasn't there a lot of violence? Well, yeah, there was. I don't know if he lost it, but there was some violence. And Ron tells the story that a guy got shot there. And they saw him fall. And then somebody said, oh, empty seat. Oh, man. That's I, so I hilarious. You, so if, you know. I'm going to read the last super chat. And then uh, we got to get her get her to my brother's. <laughs> yes. This is from Eric. Thank you, buddy. That was real, look at how generous that is. Isn't oh that crazy? Gosh, Sean. Yeah. That's how we can keep this thing afloat. Oh, yeah, we're coming right now. We're telling yes, stories okay. about... Yes, well, let but, me just the final one. Final. Tessa has to get to... And Have I don't a good know where night. The storms keep coming every day. Thanks for being rational, not real. We'll do this again. Really crazy people are real. Stay rational. I like it. Thank you, buddy. Oh, yeah, we were talking about crazies. If there's no VR bear, I'd like to have that title. I will defend all the oh, bears in virtual reality. Welcome, VR bear. All right, this has been a blast. Yes. Everyone say bye to my my awesome mom. And uh, yes. thank you, Air Bear, for that lovely picture. Yes. Okay. All right, let's go. go. All right, cool. Help Mary. Oh, Steve. I'm stiff. Do this weekly with Mama Bear. I want to. I've, I love okay. hanging with Mama Bear. <laughs> bye, everybody. Have great days. I know I streamed a lot today, but it was uh, streaming oh. Friday.